Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj is going to continue this Damodar Leela today. Uh, Guru Maharaj has covered until 10.9.12 so far. And today, Guru Maharaj will continue from 10.9.13. Guru Maharaj, we have 10 devotees online. Okay. Over to you. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Natantar Nabihir Yasya Lapuvar Napichaparam. Purva param bahis chantar Jagato yo jagats chayaha Tamatva majam avyaktam Martyalingam ahoksajam Kopi kolu kale damna Babada babanda Prakritam yataha Translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no beginning and no end, no exterior and no interior, no front and rear. In other words, he is all pervading because he is not under the influence of the element of time. For him, there is no difference between past, present and future. He exists in his own transcendental form at all times, being absolute, beyond relativity, he is freed from distinctions between cause and effect, although he is the cause and effect of everything. That unmanifested person who is beyond the perception of the senses now had appeared as a human child and Mother Yasoda, considering him her own ordinary child, bound him to the wooden mortar with a rope. Srila Prabhupada's purport in the Bhagavad Gita 10.12, Krishna is described as the Supreme Brahman, Param Brahma, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma. The word Brahma means the greatest. Krishna is the greatest and the greatest, greater than the greatest, being unlimited and all-pervading. How can it be possible for the all-pervading to be measured or bound? Then again, Krishna is the time factor. Therefore, he is the all-pervading, not only in space, but also in time. We have measurements of time, but although we are limited by past, present, and future, for Krishna, these do not exist. Every individual person can be measured, but Krishna has already shown that although he is an individual, the entire cosmic manifestation is within his mouth. All these points considered, Krishna cannot be measured. How then did Yasoda want to measure him and bind him? <clears throat> we must conclude that this took place simply on the platform of pure transcendental love. This was the only cause. Advaita Machuta Manadi Anantarupam Madhyam Purana Purusham Navayovanam Cha. Vedeshu Dorlavam Abadurlam Atma Bhakto Govindam Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami It's from Brahma Samhita 533. Everything is one because Krishna is the supreme cause of everything. Krishna can be not, cannot be met, measured or calculated by Vedic knowledge. Vedeshu Dorlavam he is available only to devotees. Adurlabham Atma Bhakto. <clears throat> devotees can handle him because they act on the basis of love and service. Bhaktimam Abhijananti Yavan Yas Jasmi Tatpataha. Thus, Mother Yasoda wanted to bind him. Omagyan Timirandasya. Ginajana Salakaya Chaksun Militamina Tasmai Shri Guruvin Maha. 
Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitanyana Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nevrasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Vey Pacha Patita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadarana Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. <coughs> So here we're hearing a little bit about the inconceivable <clears throat> nature of the unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whether he manifests himself through his energies in, in a unlimited way, or he directly manifests himself through his personal form, he is unlimited. <clears throat> The personal form of the Lord contains the impersonal aspect of the Lord. In other words, that which is unlimited is within Krishna also because Krishna and, the, and his energies are not different. Material energy is limited, but when the material energy comes in contact with the spiritual energy, it becomes unlimited, and then it's no longer material. Krishna is appearing as just a little tiny boy, a little baby. <clears throat> Mother Yasoda can pick him up and hold him in her arms, <clears throat> but she couldn't tie a rope around him. She couldn't tie him up. And all the rope that she got, and with the help of so many people, failed to bind him. <clears throat> And there were piles and piles of rope, as it's described in another narration of this particular Leela, where there was so much rope that they uh, couldn't even walk. It was all over the place. But still, they couldn't tie him up. So Krishna decided to manifest his unlimited qualities Therefore, anything material had no effect. Anything spiritual also has no effect. The only thing that has any effect is love. <laughs> That's all. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that is the factor that controls Krishna. Krishna, there are three things. There is bhakta. There is Bhagavan and there's Bhakti. Bhakta means the devotee. Bhagavan means the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. And Bhakti means the process for attracting and serving the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> to compare these three, we see that <clears throat> we see that the Bhakti or well, the process is the most powerful. Therefore, the bhakta who has the bhakti can control Bhagavan. There's no other way. The yogis, the jnanis, the tapasis, persons who perform very great austerities and penances and offer beautiful eulogies and glorification of the Lord. If there's no love there, there is no results. <laughs> Everything depends on love. And so Mother Yasoda's love, although Krishna, we see, we learn in this particular pastime, and this is indicated later on, later on at the end of the Leela, that Krishna had no desire to be bound up. He didn't want to be tied up. <laughs> That's why he manifested his, this energy. He, he, and we talked about this 
in a previous discussion where little children don't like to be tied up. <laughs> and in the role of a little child, he's exhibiting that same characteristic. He doesn't want to be tied up. <laughs> he wasn't trying to prove that he was God by manifesting this potency where they couldn't tie him up. That wasn't it. <laughs> the actual understanding of this Leela as it plays itself out is that the intensity of Mother Yasoda's love was, was increasing more and more as she was trying to tie him up. And the anxiety that she was experienced was completely transcendental because it was all about the welfare of Krishna. She wanted to tie him up for his benefit so she could go on and do service for him in another capacity. And at the same time, he would not get in trouble again. So that intensity of love reached a certain point and then Krishna agreed to be bound. <laughs> Only when that happened, then her love was, what we say, at the topmost part of her expression. You can see how Krishna was, in one sense, he wasn't actually testing her love. He just didn't want to get bound up. But her love was so powerful, it simply overshadowed anything that he wanted. And this is the, the amazing nature of Krishna. Krishna will play the role, and not play the role, but he will manifest his role as an ordinary person when he comes to the material world. And just like I was just reading yesterday in another Leela where Krishna goes to Dwarka. And now he expands himself into 16,108 queens, and each queen has a particular palace. So Krishna is in each of these palaces with a different queen, and each queen is thinking that he's only with me. And in each of the palace, Krishna is doing something different. One place, he's sitting on the bed getting fanned by his wife. In another place, he's talking with his ministers. In another place, he is uh, playing with the children. And uh, in another place, he's uh, incognito trying to find out who's trying to spy on him. <laughs> so it goes on and on and on. And Narada Muni, he comes and he sees Krishna. And then he's amazed to see how Krishna is so uh, natural in his role as a grihasta. And as soon as Narada Muni comes in, the first palace, the Lord stands up and welcomes Narada and uh, gives him a special seat, his own particular seat, and then starts um, washing his feet. Narada is overwhelmed. He knows that Krishna is simply doing this just to, um, to show the example that one should honor a great soul in this way. And now Narada Muni is accepting this. Now this goes on, finally Narada leaves the palace and he decides to, to go into another palace and there Krishna is doing something else. And Krishna sees Narada again. <laughs> And he gets up and he welcomes him again. This time, Narada is stunned. He's shocked. He can't, he's overwhelmed to see how Krishna, each time he walks into a palace, Krishna welcomes him for the first time. <laughs> so Krishna is playing the role of uh, a ordinary householder and acting in different ways with his different queens. But each of, these, each of these activities are going on simultaneously. And Narada is the only one to get to see it. The queens can't see it and the people in Dwarka can't see it because they don't have that devotion that Narada has. And so it is devotion that reveals the, the special qualities of Krishna that is inconceivable 
by any kind of material calculations. How, how do we understand that something exists but has no beginning and a no end, has no front and back, has no inside or outside? And something, uh, an individual that doesn't see any difference between past, present, and future, because he exists within a period of, uh, within a, a frame of existence that doesn't conclude these three aspects. Krishna's existence is always present. It's never past or future or in between. So these qualities that Krishna has, which are inconceivable, as Jiva Goswami says, the, the nature of the absolute truth is achintya. It is totally inconceivable. And he manifests these qualities at different times and astounds his devotees in different ways. But only those who are actually qualified can understand. And that qualification comes by pure devotion to Krishna. When, uh, when one develops the level of unalloyed devotion to Krishna, all of these apparent uh, contradictions in Krishna's in character, his qualities, his activities become clear to the devotee within the devotee's heart. They understand. They understand not by their uh, intelligence or their in mental powers. They understand by Krishna's revealing himself in that way to the devotee like that. So this is Krishna. He's uh, he doesn't fit into any category. He, he is uh, he is transcendental. He might, or he is above all categories. He is in his own category of himself. There is no definition that fits him. He his definition that fits him is what he is in his activities and in his uh, relationships to his devotees and in his yeah his activities of the all powerful supreme force within existence. But here it's so sweet that although he is so powerful and so beyond anyone's, that he becomes, you know, subservient to the love of his mother and he agrees to be tied up, although he doesn't want to. It just shows that the power of love is greater than the power of Krishna. <laughs> I think we, we also may see that in the material world, when someone really loves you and does everything to show that love, you become obliged to that person. You become inclined to that person. Even though you may not have that in, initially, that love attracts you to them and you are, you are actually wanting to do things for them. You also want to reciprocate in some way or another. In other words, you, you even give up what you like to do just to somehow or other show some favors or some reciprocation for that person who is showing you love in so many different ways. So we even see it in the material world. But with Krishna, it's complete and it's perfect. And to reach pure love is the goal of Krishna consciousness. Um, that, that goal is already attained by one's existence because all living entities, and that means in any form that they may appear in the material world, in their spiritual essence, has pure love for Krishna. Even the insects who crawl around in the ground are pure spiritual entities who have pure love for Krishna. The only thing is because they're in that body, they can't realize it or recognize it or exhibit it. And so this is the nature of the relationship with Krishna. And Mother Yasoda, and she's the best. <laughs> And she's so spiritually in love with Krishna that it's so strong that even Krishna can't resist it, although he tries to resist it. <laughs> He's defeated. And no one can defeat Krishna. 
it says the Krishna sometimes it says I when Krishna talks about himself I whose I whose endeavor never fails will act in other words whatever Krishna wants it happens <laughs> But then, then this power of love even overshadows that. So to love Krishna is the highest form of existence because it connects you with the absolute supreme personality of God eternally in association in, in various types of activities. That is perfection of life. And that should be the goal of all living beings because that's the only goal that can fully satisfy the soul. Savai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhakti ahog sajay ahoy tu ki apriyata yatma supersede the tea. That activity in human society of serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion is the highest of all activity. And that activity in order to reach perfection must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Mother well, Yasoda has that. There's no motivation other than the, than the loving sentiments which are imbued with her protective nature as a mother in relationship to Krishna. And she doesn't stop. She doesn't take a break. There's no... She doesn't, she's thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day. She can't stop thinking of Krishna, even if she wanted to. Her love is so strong. Mm -hmm. And we, we read, what are some of the characteristics of love? It's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and also in the Bhagavatam, that one loses all sense of everything else and simply becomes absorbed in the activities of love. It sometimes makes sense and sometimes makes no sense at all. <laughs> That's the nature of love. <laughs> sometimes a person in love talks crazy, acts crazy, cannot function on in the material world. These are some of the symptoms of loving relationships. We study the life of the gopis, you'll see how that manifests itself. That even in it even, come, even expresses itself in contradictory ways. Love follows no rule. It's, it is in itself, itself, it is the only rule. So th this is what Mother Yasoda has, the pure love for Krishna. And all she thinks about is how to, how to make Krishna happy, how to keep him nice and fed, how to keep him protected, and how to uh, serve him in different ways for his happiness, which is ultimately her happiness. Okay, so this, uh, this particular verse and purport describes something that is not describable, <laughs> something that appears to be full of contradictions. That is the nature of that's why it says, taking some of these principles and applying it in, in a different way, we understand that a materialist can not understand a spiritualist and the spiritualists think all materialists are ridiculous. <laughs> they can, a, a spiritual, a fully spiritual person will see the, the activities of the materialists and think, what a waste of time. <laughs> There is no benefit in, in what they're doing and what they're trying to achieve. <clears throat> and a materialist will look at a spiritualist and think, you know, why are they wasting their time? They could, you know, make it, they could get a nice job and have a nice house and have a nice family and so many things and be happy in this world. Why do they simply uh, chanting these these names of God and and wait and going to temples and spending time when they could be 
spending their time in a, a way that they would make more money and do more do more and more things to make themselves happy in this world. So you'll see there's an opposite. <clears throat> The materialist can't understand the spiritualist, and the spiritualists think the materialists are simply wasting their life. So, birds of a feather flock together. Crows and swans do not hang out in the same place. <laughs> okay. Questions, comments? Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for nicely narrating these beautiful pastimes. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions, comment, or realization, please unmute yourself. And uh, if you want me to read, then you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for another beautiful, beautiful delineation of the sweet love of Mother Yashoda that conquers Krishna. As you were speaking, I was thinking about this process of bhakti and how powerful it is. And I was thinking about my own puny little self and <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, can I really ever do this? Can I ever really practice bhakti properly? And can I ever really attain this love? It seems like trying to climb, you know, the top of Mount Everest, uh, being an ant, you know? So I was just thinking like, is it something that's even possible at, at, at the level? Mukhaṁ karoti vāchālaṁ phangu lagate gīrim yat kripa karatana ham bande shri guru dīnatārinam Yes, yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that is so true. It's only by mercy that it's possible becomes possible. The combined mercy of Guru and Krishna together, not just Guru's mercy, but combined with Krishna's mercy. In and of ourselves, it's not possible. Right, right. But uh, this is the goal and the most desirable state of being, actually. This is who we really are, pure, loving servants of Krishna. And we have lost our way and come over here. So... Tattam laoyam mulam. Now, Prabhupada said, this is the only qualification. One has to have intense eagerness to get Krishna. And then he says, if you can't cry for Krishna, you can't get Krishna. <laughs> mm. Not fake tears, but real tears. Mm. That's ultimately, that's what it takes. Tattam mm. molyam. What is it? Molyam. Uh, there's that one verse that intense greed that's the only qualification that is the only success of getting Krishna intense greed mm. but it's possible mm. when we learn more about Krishna and we start to we see the futility and the ridiculousness of this material world and all the suffering that comes with it. And then our desire for Krishna becomes stronger. And if we move in that direction, it'll become stronger and stronger and stronger. And then when you're about leaving your body, you don't think who's going to get my money or who's going to... Uh, take care of my clothes or, or who's going to do this or who's going to do that. You don't even care what happens. <laughs> it's just what Krishna has. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
I'm just using a little examples. But Krishna is so kind. If you dedicate your life fully to Krishna, Krishna will give you, Krishna was there at the time of death to take you. But we have to be completely dedicated in our service to the Lord. Right. Read out all the other unwanted things like anarthas and clear our hearts of all unnecessary attachments. Yeah. Attach ourselves to Krishna. Yeah, we look for association of devotees, especially senior devotees, to give us that. So if you go to Sri Dham Mayapur, you'll be more, you'll be equipped with more of the tools to achieve more mercy. That is the mercy of the Dham, the mercy of oh, well, there's great devotees everywhere. But the mercy of the Dham, the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is full-blown mercy in his Dham. So we want to finish out our life in, the, in a place where we can make an easy exit back to the spiritual world. In the meantime, we stay wherever we are and we preach and we engage in our devotional service like that. When it becomes time, and Krishna will say, okay, you're ready for the next stage. <laughs> but then there's those who want to die on the battlefield, as Prabhupada said, they want to die preaching. <laughs> and that's glorious. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's uh, really, truly, we are so blessed by this matchless gift that Srila Prabhupada has given us by, you know, coming down to this material world and teaching us the way back home. My, my desire is that to purify myself. And many times I think that I don't even know whether, you know, my goal is in line with what Krishna would desire, wants of me, because sometimes I think that uh, my wanting to go back to Godhead is more my desire. Is this something that I should be desiring or I should be just desiring whatever Krishna wants, that should happen. You should desire just to be engaged in pure devotional service. That's, that's perfection. Okay. So supposing we are desiring, Krishna, I really want to come back. I really don't want to take birth again in this material world. But keep that in the background, but keep pure devotional service in the foreground. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Is that if Krishna wants to take me back, that's fine. If he wants to keep me here in the material world, that's also fine. Hmm. Just that's, full, that's, full, that's full surrender. Right, right. I don't know if I'm dead <laughs> at that point, honestly, Guru <laughs> Just muddling alone, but thank you. Thank you for delineating that very clearly for me. If you stay fully engaged in devotional service, you don't touch this material world at all. Mm. You have to learn that art, how to stay fully engaged. Right. Yes, Guru. And when you have no more material desires, then, then it becomes more natural. Yes, Guru Maharaj. By your mercy, we can all purify ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Okay. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, please unmute yourself. Guru Maharaj, I have one question while devotees ask other question. So related to Sri Devi Mataji question, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes, like uh, we should desire that uh, 
that Krishna can, uh, I can come to that stage where uh, I don't have any material desire. But how to come to that stage, Guru Maharaj? It's very difficult, really. Like more, I feel like I feel like one day I feel yes, I should never ask Krishna anything. But next day, situation comes, I say I feel like completely in this. If you if you have a material desire, don't act on it. If you don't act on it and you stay engaged in devotional service by the power of your devotional service and by not acting on your material desires, your material desires will naturally dissipate. Because they're ephemeral, they just cover the soul. They're not real. They're like clouds over the sun. So if you act on your material desires, then they get stronger. If you don't act on them and simply stay engaged in devotional service, gradually they become weaker and they disappear. <laughs> but every time you feed them, they get stronger. So recognize what is those material desires. Anything that's not in line with mm, devotional service, you might say is something that is unnecessary. There's many kinds of material desires, and that's what they're explained also. And desires of the mind, desires of the intelligence, desires of the, the desires of the senses, desires of the body, um, general desires of uh, the subtle desires, uh, profit, adoration, distinction, fame, wanting to be recognized. Wanting to get something from whatever you do. I mean, study uh, nectar devotion, nectar devotion will, will really teach you along with nectar instruction, what is what are the material desires Bhagavatam explains them also. The nectar devotion is really the science of getting rid of material desires. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, luckily, uh, having some little understanding of this as part of Bhakti Shastri course, because we, Murli Mano Prabhu is teaching us nectar of devotion. So. Yeah. Never think you're free from material life. Always take shelter of Krishna. And that way you're in the best position not to be victimized by material energy. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. It's a process, but it's it's joyfully performed. Then, of course, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, just by doing Harinam Sankirtan, this is where your material desires run away fast. Now have kirtan as much as possible. Engage in kirtan, go to kirtans, chant. Come together with family members and friends and discuss the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hold home programs, invite devotees over, distribute prasadam, talk about Krishna and through Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. If we just do, if we just spend most of our time maintaining our family and going to work and then whatever time left over, we give, we give it to Krishna. Uh, we'll probably wind up coming back in another life to try again. <laughs> we have to intensify and increase our devotional activities, especially hearing and chanting, and inspire others to do the same. It's true, Guru Maharaj. Like devotional service, sometimes 
like feels tiring but it internally gives pleasure we are having daily kartik damodar satsang myself ananda satyam mata ji vrindavan dham prabhu every day new family yeah it's very tiring every day we are going different different family and uh, but uh, at the end of the day it feels very very happy and blissful so yeah that that feeling is an indication that you, you used your time for krishna <laughs> Thank use you very much. Use your intelligence, use your words, use your resources, use your time, use your life for Krishna. <laughs> This world is simply what it is. It's a, it's a prison house. In the word the locking process is the material energy, the three modes. And then there's another prison that is the prison of have, being caught within this material body. so we're locked up by at least two prisons the material body and the material energy and then each time we add a, a material desire on it we tighten the, we tighten the bars we add more chains to our the locking process this place is a prison the soul wants to be free but he can't not here and devotee association guru maharaj makes a huge difference devotee association and hearing and chanting these three things yes tam prasangam mam avirya sambhido bhavati hit karna rasayana katha in the association of great devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the lord is nectar it brings one to the transcendental platform and gives one great happiness and awakens one to transcendental knowledge deal with the material world as if you were dealing with uh, carrying a fire from one place to another that's all <laughs> just be very careful how to deal with it deal with the material world simply out of requirement and necessity but not as a feature of happiness our family is either material or spiritual if we engage in devotional service and center our family activities around krishna then our family is spiritual but if we simply maintain the family so we can have a nice place to sleep and have nice food and enjoy some kind of sense gratification in that atmosphere and produce children that look like us so we can feel proud that i made a prototype of myself <laughs> people you know they like their children because they're reflections of their own ego <laughs> and so all of these things you know when it's done in the, in the proper consciousness with krishna as the center huh? it's no longer material spiritual and it'll take you back to godhead it's a matter of consciousness consciousness applied to activities makes the is the is the criteria for coming to the spiritual platform Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, we still have five more minutes to go. Uh, please unmute yourself. I have a comment, Maharaj. Okay, Mr. Raj. Hare Krishna. 
Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, when you say that we're in a prison, it feels like that we are in a prison, but it feels <laughs> like that you come and visit us at visiting time every day and you light up our light and you light up our hearts and the prison dissipates away whilst we're listening to you, Maharaj. And whilst we're still remembering your words and your instructions. I am coming to visit you so I can get out of the prison also. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. This material world is very, very uh, binding. Very binding. But with the association of devotees and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, we're moving back to the spiritual world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for always asking your questions with a very Nice smile. You're always smiling when you're asking questions. <laughs> it gives us hope. <laughs> How can I not smile when I'm talking to you, Maharaj? <laughs> Even when I saw you in the temple that, what was it, a few months ago, you were smiling. <laughs> You were making a smile with your ecstatic kitten and your wonderful class. I'm simply trying to remember what Prabhupada told me <clears throat> and trying to convey it to the devotees. That's all. Try to be a good messenger. That's all. Oh, well, you're definitely that, Maharaj. Could hear you all day long. Yeah, then Prabhupada said that we have enough information and knowledge to speak unlimitedly without stopping. It never gets old. Yeah, that's what they do in the spiritual world. They just glorify Krishna, serve Krishna. You have to practice that now, <clears throat> doing it as much as we can. Okay. Thank you. I see a hand up on SB 13 there. What is that? Hare Krishna Dira Gurudev. Please accept my hava based so close to the Prabhupada. Uh, okay. uh, that's... You hear me? Yes, Prabhu, can hear you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, thank you very much for the points. Uh, I was just writing and I was just thinking about the. They said that it's glorious to die on the battlefield, preaching, and now I'm just as, thinking like how can this be not artificial because maybe you know out of egoism or insincerity we can kind of you know go full on and and try our best uh, or actually the process, over the, and process of, the process of krishna consciousness is not artificial it's not pretentious if you follow the process and develop the right rules then everything comes naturally <clears throat> Krishna consciousness is not surreptitiously applying something onto your consciousness and then saying that that's... We try to theoretically understand the knowledge and so we can apply it. But unless you apply it, the, the theoretical application will dissipate in due course of time. You have to apply it. And apply it, it becomes part of you. You become transformed. Your consciousness becomes transformed. Your life becomes transformed. Your values become transformed. Your associations become changed. 
Everything changes as you make progress in devotional service. You don't have to kind of like write it out in the blueprint and then memorize it and then think, when I forget it, I'll just read the paper. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, you're developing your spiritual character, which is there within you already. It's in the soul. <clears throat> Devotional service means engaging you, the soul, in Krishna, in the service of the Supreme Lord in various ways. <clears throat> it's not a mechanical process by, by just applying certain uh, <clears throat> ideas and certain ways to do things. It's simply engaging in devotional service according to the instructions of the spiritual master and Krishna, and developing that consciousness of serving Krishna accordingly. We have to be eager to serve. And through service, we can learn. We can also learn by reading, but unless that reading takes a, a practical stance in our activities, it will remain theoretical. So you want something to become realized, all right, so you have some knowledge. So apply the knowledge. And one of the ways to apply the knowledge is speak the knowledge. Speak the knowledge to others. And then it becomes more part of you. Through Shravadam, Kirtanam comes. And through Kirtanam, Smarnam comes. And when Smarnam reaches perfection, that's Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> not a mechanical process it's a it's a process of devo devoting our time energy and resources in serving krishna in the direction of the spiritual master's instructions and krishna's instructions that's all learn the knowledge learn the instructions Apply them. Your material existence is fake. It's ephemeral. Your spiritual existence is real. Now you have to go beyond, go, go beyond your material conceptions into the spiritual reality through devotional service. That's all. Thank you, Maharaj. You're not Croatian. You're not a man. <laughs> These are just labels that we that are given to us by the particular body and the particular place where we are. We appear in this world. Also. The soul is neither young nor old. Maharaj, sometimes I feel like I don't have enough energy. How to how to overcome that? You mean physical energy? Yeah, like uh, exhausted. Uh, like I just feel like I have no en more energy to continue on or to push more. Yeah, it's all due to you. You just need more. You just need association. That's all. Association energizes us makes us forget about our material situation it energizes us i can tell i can talk from experience sometimes i feel tired well as soon as i'm with devotees and the kirtan starts and the lectures everything changes as soon as we come into that spiritual energy with the association with devotees and and doing devotional activities there's where you get your energy. <clears throat> energy will come from the soul. The soul is the source of energy, not the body. Food nourishes the body to maintain the body, but energy comes from the soul. It's interesting, Maharaj. 
usually when I'm tired for service, from service, uh, uh, devotees come and give me more service. And then I'm thinking like, okay, how, how to manage that? <laughs> so I don't know, but I guess that, you know, if you're doing it in the right, in the right consciousness, you will not be tired from service. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> you have to see how much you can do nicely. But you should always be thinking service. I mean, you can sometimes the devotees take on too much service, and then the quality of whatever they do has a tendency to become less because they're always trying to do more. So you have to be able to do everything nicely. But we can always do more than what you're doing. That's also a feature of devotional life, we think. I can always do more. Or I can always do better. Yeah, it's all based on association. In your case, that's what it is. It's association. And if you, the stronger you are, the more you can maintain yourself with less association. But you get association and you get you get strength from others. You know, a great soul can be fully engaged in devotional service simply without any physical association. But to get to that stage requires association. <laughs> I will then endeavor for more association, Maharaj, so that you know, I can, I can. Thank you very much for me. Don't try to be a Babaji. <laughs> <laughs> and in that association, try to serve in the best possible way. Even the materialists, they get energy from serving when they serve the way they like to serve. A devotee, because it's material, they get energy from the way they like to serve. But spiritually, you get energy from any service because it's not, it's not limited. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Is Sri Devi still with us? Yes, she is. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm here. Can you have any more transcriptions coming from you? Sure, Guru Maharaj. If you would like, I can resume that. No problem. Yeah, we want to finish up the year, the year 2016, the month of February. Okay. And then go on. Okay. Then go on to finish 2019. Okay. No problem. Sounds very good. But just don't hurt your eyes. If just make sure it doesn't uh, impair, impinge on your eyes. Do what you can can nicely without any any uh, any problems arising. Okay. Okay. I will. I will be very mindful and not uh, not spoil my eyes. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, but you know, maybe you can do it like <clears throat> five, ten minutes at a time, and then take a break for a half hour or something. <clears throat> yeah, I can do it for a little longer and take a break, and then again come back and do it maybe fifteen twenty minutes, something like that. Yeah. Just don't hurt your eyes. That's all. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Certainly, I will not. I will not hurt my eyes. Don't worry. I will take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Damodar Vrata ki jai. May this month never end. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much.